Hello and welcome to pdfsupply.com. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up and configure an RX3i system. I'm also going to be showing you guys how to download to the processor your physical configuration. Okay, so in order to do that, first thing that I want to show you guys is what I have physically in front of you here, which is um, an IC695CHS0077-slot rack. I have an IC695 PSA 040 power supply, an IC695 CPU 320 RX3i processor, an IC694 ALG223. This is a 16 point or 16 channel analog input current, uh, measures current input in milliamps, an IC694 MDL940 16 point relay output. 24 volt DC and an IC695 ETM001 Ethernet controller module. Okay, now as you can see, I've already have the power supply powered up and I have OK lights on where I'm expecting OK lights to be on and, and green. CPU OK, Ethernet OK, module OK for the ALG223. All right, so this is just an example. Now it is a seven slot rack. But unlike 9030, where the power supply and the processor are only using one slot, and this is very relevant, and I'm going to show you guys this in the, in the Prophecy Machine Edition software in a moment, the power supply and the CPU are both using two slots, okay? That's important to keep in mind. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is uh, connect up to it using an HE693 CBL232 cable. There are other cables you can use, but this is what I happen to be using. It's a 9-pin serial port coming from the back of the computer to a 9-pin at the, the end that you can see in front of you. And I'm attached to COM port number 2 using a 15-pin adapter, and this part is an HE693SNP232. Uh, if you guys choose, or if you're already using COM port number one, that's fine. Just remember that you have to use a gender adapter if you're using an uh, HE693CBL232. Okay, another thing to keep in mind is please make sure you always have a battery in the CPU and the battery is connected and that you don't have a red battery light. The part number on that battery for your reference is an IC695ACC302. Okay. So now that we've gone over the physical configuration, I want to direct your attention. I'm using Prophecy Machine Edition software. Okay. And what we're going to do, if you can follow my mouse arrow, is go to File, New Project. And we're going to set up a brand new clean project. The platform we're going to be using for this, of course, is the uh, PAC Systems RX3i. And we're going to call this a RX. 3i config. Okay, you guys can call it whatever you want. But I do have to have a name in the in the project name in order to go any further. I'm going to select OK. The next thing is once Prophecy Machine Edition establishes a clean blank file in just a moment here, I'm going to go to the navigator bar, which on mine I believe goes to the right side of the screen. I'm going to go to rack zero, again if you're following my, my arrow here, and I'm going to hit the plus sign next to rack zero to expand that. Okay, so the factory default is that it's going to automatically go to a, a 12 slot rack and we're using a 7 slot rack. So if you guys are using something other than a 12 slot rack, you'll need to right click on the rack and hit replace rack. I'm going to use my 7 slot. Then in slots 0 and 1, the first two slots is my IC695 PSA040, that's fine. And in slot 2 is the processor, IC695 CPU320, using slots 2 and 3. Now that's important to keep in mind that these four slots are already being used, and that leaves you with three slots, as you can see, the uh, ALG223, the MDL940, and the ETM001. So here's what we're going to do to configure those. I'm going to right click on slot 4, or you can double click, select add module, and it's an analog input that we're using. 
It's an IC694, so you can see it gives you the option to do 693. It uh, shouldn't really matter, but I'm going to do the IC694 ALG223. And the first thing, before I go any further, I'm in slot 4. The location, if you're following my arrow, is uh, of the uh, ALG223 is slot 4. But there's options that I have. There's settings that I can edit. Okay. So what I want to do is it starts with allowing you to activate one channel. Now I'm going to use all 16 channels. If you guys choose, you could put 8 channels or 6 or whatever it is that you want to use. But I'm going to use all 16 channels. The next thing that I want to know just for my reference is what the channel address is. So percent analog input 00001. That way when I go to see a reading, if I want to go see a reading on the table, I would go to this particular address and that's where I'm going to see the reading that's related to that card in slot 4. Okay, next is slot 5. Double click or right click. This is easy, it's a discrete output. IC694 MDL940. And there's no configurations that we have to be concerned with. However, same as the other uh, ALG223, you always want to keep in mind what your reference address is for this module and if you need to change it. So um, it's percent output Q references output 00001. All right. So again, if I go to my uh, tables to, to view or to turn on a relay, I'll need to know where that address is. Okay, next thing is we're going to right click on slot 6 and add the final module. Communications device. This is the ETM001. What I'm going to do here is I can right click, or I, I rather can double click and highlight it and just add an IP address. And what I'm going to do is add an IP address that I'm sure is not going to conflict with anything on our network. And then, of course, I'm going to add a subnet mask. All right, and that's configured. All right. So now I have the, the physical configuration is done. Uh, you can check it over. You can go back through your slots um, to see if there's any other configuration parameters you want to change. All right, but it's all done. Everything that you see physically in front of you at the beginning of this video is now in the rack configuration properly. So now I'm going to hit the connection arrow. All right, this is a, a lightning bolt icon that will connect me to the processor. You should see a light blinking on, on whatever COM port you're using, and then it'll connect up. Also notice at the bottom of the screen that it's in monitor mode. It's stop disabled. That would be the outputs that are stop disabled. Configuration is not equal, and the logic is not equal. All right, now I'm going to hit on this green handprint, which puts me into programmer mode. Go to target go to clear and all we want to do here is clear any uh, present controller fault or IO fault. And the reason we do that is because if, if you don't do it it could potentially hang you up when it gets to the point where it's trying to download this configuration to the processor. All right, then we're going to hit download and start active target it's good to go through this run even if you don't really need to get it into run mode right away because you want to see if there's anything wrong with your configuration, if you're lacking something, if there's an asterisk that in this particular case I'm not really downloading a program so I'm just going to choose hardware and logic, hardware configuration motion and logic. Uh, I'm not going to sa save anything to permanent flash memory, memory just yet. Again this is just an example and hit OK. So as I was saying before, if you follow my mouse, that if there is a problem it is somewhere in the configuration, there usually be a star or an asterisk next to the module that there's a problem with. All right? And another thing to notice is if you could tell at the tip of my arrow on slot next to where it says slot zero, there's uh, a little green bar here. If for some reason the modules that you have attached to the rack, or let's say you're using a 17 slot rack and you've really got it pretty full and maxed out, this green 
uh, bar may turn yellow or even red and what that's indicating is that you're putting a strain on the power supply okay so again if you guys are using a, a, a heavy-duty rack and processor and you got a lot of things going on you may need a the most powerful uh, wattage power supply keep that in mind as well all right but what I'm trying to tell you is what these errors are and what they mean all right, so I'm successfully in run mode uh, if for example I wasn't able to get to run mode and there was a problem and I wanted to see where that problem is another thing I could do besides looking at the rack itself is go to target go to diagnostics which is about two-thirds of the way three-quarters of the way down this this uh, window and what will happen is your info viewer tab will turn into a fault table viewer currently we don't have any faults but if there were they would be displayed where it says displaying zero of zero faults there might be uh, one or two or, or a, a multiple faults and then what you want to do is you want to look at the location of where that fault is location would describe what slot okay like above here 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 and then to the right of location, it'll give you a description of what it is. If you want to expand on that, simply click on it. It'll give you the error code, and it could give you more information that may be helpful. A lot of times, it's very easily understood what the problem is and where it is. It may say location 6, and it may say that there's a misconfiguration. Maybe you forgot to put in the IP address. It could be something that simple. Or uh, um, you may have put the wrong module in the wrong slot but there are occasions where it's it's actually just a um, an error code which is maybe less likely to be understood so you could run into a couple problems but usually it's pretty straightforward okay so now that it's in run mode i'm pretty sure that my configuration is a good working configuration if you're using a 12 slot rack all the same rules apply if you want to add a module you simply right click or or double click and you're able to change the module or add a module okay and that that goes for racks power supplies CPUs and any input and output or communication modules you can all select those through here okay I hope this has been some help for you guys thank you